Hello world champions, I'm John Ward and this is Breaking News with John Ward Breaking News. Breaking News! The Ides of March are here, and if history is to be believed, the omens point to assassination. Maybe of a candidate who's fallen out of lockstep with the Uniparty, or maybe of our collective will to continue one step further into the clown apocalypse that is 2024. But you can't spell assassination without I. Or nation, the United States of America, or ass ass, which at this point might just be God's way of rubbing it in. Stare long enough into 2024, and 2024 stares also back into you. Have a stare with me as we recap every major story of the first quarter of the end of the world. One. Donald Trump has officially won the 2024 Republican presidential primary election after meeting and surpassing the 1,215 delegates needed to become the party's nominee. He currently stands at 1,241 to runner-up Nikki Haley's 94, just the latest in a series of poundings for Haley, who was forced to drop out of the Republican primary after it was revealed that the majority of her money and voters were Democrats, beyond which the prostitution metaphor gets quite literal. Even worse was Ron DeSantis, who made the probably career-ending mistake of running four years too early on the transparently obvious rhino ticket. Americans found this less appealing than a literal whore and kicked DeSantis to the ego-littered gutter of history at just nine delegates. DeSantis booted at less than one-tenth the votes of Haley, who was booted at less than one-tenth the votes of Trump. What did we learn? One in 10 Republicans is a snake, and one in 10 of those snakes is retarded. Not retarded? Trump is the nominee. Well done, America. You're a bloodthirsty coliseum, and it might just save the world. Two. Good news. The Haitians finally have food. Bad news. It's Haitians. Three. Many American companies have struggled in 2024, and some have wildly succeeded. Two cases in particular stand out as a success, technology giant NVIDIA, which blew right past a trillion dollar valuation and became the world's third most valuable company, just behind Microsoft and Apple. And hey, look at that, right after Nancy Pelosi bought call options that netted her upwards of $5 million in profit. On the other side of the coin, Boeing. Doors blowing out, wheels falling off, pilots treating the terrain alarm like a low battery smoke detector. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, and yes, I just assumed your genders. You don't need to go to Canada anymore for legal euthanasia. You just need to book a flight there and make sure it's a Boeing. This is, of course, part of a wider implosion of the air travel industry in general. If recent developments are to be believed, and man, they're hard to. Not only are you going to be landing in an aircraft that has significantly less parts than it took off with, but you have a substantially non-zero chance that that landing will also be directed by an air traffic controller who wrestles with advanced concepts like, is there another plane in the way? And the pilot this person is directing is very likely the kind of person who can hold up their hands in those L shapes right in front of their face, take a good hard look at each one, and then bank hard right into the control tower, solving everyone involved's lifelong battle with a condition called thinking. But wait, there you go, noticing again. Is this all just a ploy? A controlled demolition of the air travel industry designed to isolate the plebes on a chain of islands only the elites can hop? Prisons with invisible walls, a gulag archipelago. Does the controlled demolition of the auto industry tie into this supposed strategy? Are we being herded into smaller, more manageable pig pens? The answer to that and more is yes. Four. NVIDIA's explosion in value is tied directly to the emergence and proliferation of AI, artificial intelligence. The most hilarious of these is Google's Gemini, which launched earlier this year amidst massive hype and promptly erased $90 billion of market value when it turned out it was coded to add the word black to any prompt about human beings, resulting on the one hand in black Nazis and on the other hand in the complete absence of white people, period. As Gemini was poised to become integrated into the private and public sectors, this raised some tricky questions about Google's intentions. Fortunately, these fears are mitigated by the fact that Gemini's code is essentially a 1990s random rap name generator, just with a smaller database, which is just the word black. Five. Black college administrators are dropping like flies in Nikki Haley's SRX after the remarkable discovery of the correlation between support for Palestine and academic plagiary. Harvard President Claudine Gay was the biggest domino to fall after accusations of anti-Semitism led to the discovery that she wasn't fit to lead a major university after all. 
That's not to say the plagiarism wasn't real. It was. Meaning that this isn't so much a scandal in either direction as it is the way American universities work. Which I imagine has something to do with the fact that everyone in this country who went to college, including me, is an utterly unsalvageable moron. Six. Palestine is being systematically genocided by Planet of the Rothschilds, the latter of which seem to be on a completely rudderless chimp out since the death of their patriarch, Jacob Rothschild, best known for his photo in front of Satan summoning his legions with Maria Abramovic, and his photo finger dunking on then Prince and now King Charles. Jacob enjoyed the effectively infinite wealth built by the Rothschild banking dynasty, notably following the Napoleonic Wars when his triple great-grandfather Nathan more or less bought England for free, and the generation before when his quad great-grandfather Mayer just straight up invented money. Quote, the state of Israel began with the words, Dear Lord Rothschild, so perhaps it is appropriate that it teeters on the brink of sharing the epigraph, Goodbye Lord Rothschild. And many other major families are in crisis, either passing the torch to an unsubtle goon like the Soros family, or parking your Tesla in your fish tank like the Chow family. <laughs> Families are always rising and falling in America, but it's of course bigger than America because it's Rome during the Ides of March. <laughs> What's the matter, smart ass? You don't know any fucking Shakespeare? Seven. The barbarians are at the gates. Lost in the humor one uses to cope with situations like Haiti is the fact that these dirt cookie enthusiasts from the Thunderdome and every other lunatic South America just kick the fuck out is now pouring over the southern border in the millions, no joke. There have been more illegal crossings in the first three months of 2024 than under four years of Trump and eight years of Obama combined. The Great Replacement is no longer a conspiracy theory. Even Elon Musk is openly calling out the obvious Democrat strategy to replace indigenous black Americans with Latino colonizers as the new left-wing slave, oops, I mean voter base. This will be the final American election without a permanent Democrat majority. The good news is that the existing Democrat slave, oops, I mean voter base has finally gotten a taste of these southerly neighbors, and it's a lot less tasty tacos and a lot more militarized public transport. This is a problem for the Democrats going into the 2024 election. As much as their constituents don't like icky feelings and mean words, it's hard to unsee a young liberal activist getting knifed to death by the people he advocates for, or to watch your taxes go to a criminal who just punched your public safety enforcers and are now double burning you to the face in your hometown while the National Guardsman checking your ID at the subway is giving you sh** for complaining. The next four years being offered by the Democrats are now demonstrably a living hell for Democrats, which is not a great way to win an election, and probably has something to do with the levels of fraud we're seeing approaching the theoretical limits of absurdity. 8. Fraud Fraud is everywhere. Alex Jones is forced to liquidate his assets to cover the ridiculous billion dollar Sandy Hook judgment. People who actually have a billion dollars getting helicoptered and airplaned and tesla left and right. Trump will clearly be in nonstop and blatantly corrupt legal quicksand through the election, though you don't need a brain to see the vote fuel. A crazy woman can go on TV, say, rape is sexy, then accuse you of rape decades in the past with no evidence and contradictory testimony. And you might legit still have to pay her nearly $100 million. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I want to live in that world. Michael Rappaport doesn't want to live in that world, and just a year ago, he had TDS so bad he was getting literal herpes sores on his face. Add in the fact that while you're writing the $100 million ransom check, which is what it is, your plane is actively crashing into a literal cannibal holocaust, and on the off chance you survive both the impact and the neighborhood barbecue, you'll be clubbed to death by a Chinese guy wearing a sombrero while he waves an American flag. The change is coming. Some would argue that it's already here. New lines drawn, new factions making themselves known. And at stake, the limitless productive potential of planet Earth's most lucrative crop. You. That's it for today. I'm John Ward, and this has been Breaking News with John Ward Breaking News. Until next time, remember, you're a world champion. Don't let your memes be dreams.
fucking shit. This fucking town that is lit. Oh, oh.